So after the end released a couple days ago on Steam, finally, I know you guys have been asking me when it was coming for a long time and I had to lie a lot saying that it would be like a week from now or a month from now, but I, I kind of knew when it was going to come out. And so um, in, in honor of that, I decided that we're going to do one of my starts I recommend videos. Uh, but for this one, I'm going to try and cover as much ground as I can without giving you too much. That's sort of oxymoronic, but I, do, I want you to get a good taste of certain areas and like certain starts that you can do that are interesting but also, you know, not overwhelm you. There's not a ton of lore, as I've mentioned in the primer video. There is lore, but it's not as important. What is important though, is the unique faiths in the mod that make up the bulk of what makes it special. So we're just going to start, I'm basically gonna go from top to bottom and just try and point out a few. I don't know how many it's gonna be in total. I'm just going to try and uh, show you some starts that I think are interesting, some faiths that I think are cool, and maybe some areas that just have a little bit of lore that you can check out. So starting off way up here in the north, we have Svalbard, which is technically, I think, the northernmost populated place in the world, if I'm not mistaken. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I think it's part of Norway, technically, but it is also part of North America. So they worship the Earth Vault, which if you're familiar with our, you know, real life, I was about to say real life lore, but that's not how you call it that. Um, there's a seed vault that exists in Svalbard, which in case of an apocalypse, there's, there's basically every seed, every plant that we have access to is stored here so that that should we need to regrow the earth we can regrow that and they basically worship that which i think is really cool i don't know the practicality of actually playing up there i don't i mean i guess you could play tall it doesn't seem like there'd be a whole lot going on considering greenland only has people along the what would this be the southwestern coast so you know it could be a little boring but it's just an interesting little spot and i wanted to highlight it so the next one I want to do is the Beatons, and I like them for two reasons. They have a really cool history. They usurped, well, not really usurped. They sort of took over the area from the previous family that used to live in this area. And they're also this really cool veteranic faith. They worship this person known as the Unknown Savior, which is the basically second coming of Christ, but not the Christ that you think of. It's not Jesus Christ. It is Christ. They were basically like the unknown soldier and they died in the war to end all and they released the holy spirit and it basically helped end the war that was the event that in, in in the way that they see it i plan on making a video about this faith because it's it's super interesting but the unknown savior is a, is a cool character and they worship that and they have like this affinity for poppies there's three different veteranic faiths so if you wanted to really play as any of those I would recommend it, but the Beatons are probably the coolest one up here in the Maritimes. So I can um, I can attest, you know, from one of the devs that they're they're a fan favorite, and they you just have a lot of options here too because you can go north, you can go this way, you can go south into New England if you want to. Just a lot of avenues of play, and I just I also love their sigil. I mean. Look at that. So not in really any particular order. I'm jumping down to an occultist faith. Now there's the lobster men and there's also just the hemlockers. So two different occultists. It doesn't actually matter to me which one you pick. I just think you should play as an occultist. So the hemlockers are more like forest people. Think of maybe, not maybe like Appalachians, but not necessarily. So they sort of like live in the woods. They do esoteric rituals and they basically worship the old gods and they worship like weird mythical creatures and it's cool. Whereas the lobstermen sort of try to prevent the deep ones from coming ashore and they sort of see themselves as the last bastion against that. So they, they kind of have a weirder relationship as far as I understand with their occultism than the other ones do. But still two really cool faiths. They're all over here in New England if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, you have the gothics and you have the fathomless. So... I would try out either one of those. Again, it doesn't really matter who you pick. You can play as this guy. He has a king. He's king. He also has a brother who's apparently interesting to play as. Or you have various other gothic people up here. It, again, just, just select whichever one looks interesting to you and go from there. Probably whichever one has the coolest start. I kind of like the Green Mountain idea just because New Hampshire is a cool state. And you have all this Green Mountain stuff. And I believe they also get access to, if you take this over, yeah, the Kingdom of the Twin Crowns. So that could be a fun early game uh, goal for you while you try to reunite New England. A little further down, I have to mention Allegheny. I live in Winchester, Pennsylvania, which I've said before, and of course, I have to mention the Galvanists. I really love the industrial fates, how they worship the old titans of industry, literally just like Carnegie, Rockefeller, people like that, and that they worship industry itself. I honestly feel like in other media, they would sort of be maybe the bad guys, but they're sort of like if the Brotherhood of Steel was good and wanted to use technology to rebuild the world and make it better than it was pre-event, and it's just an interesting prospect to me. Plus, you know, you can't go wrong. Over here in the Rust Belt, there's a lot of potential. I also love the variation of the industrial faiths. Like over here, you have the Promethean cults and they sort of 
believe themselves to be Titan Kings or they're trying to achieve the status of Titan Kings. So if you wanted to be a industrialist that's sort of like seeking a lot of power, seeking to make themselves as strong as possible and be worshipped basically here on Earth, there you go. You can play as one of the Promethean cults, which I think there's only maybe this one and one other. But you could take over all of Michigan and then start your journey on constructing the Steel Belt Empire. Since we're nearby, I obviously have to talk about Constantine of Bruce of House Saudi. He has probably the most elaborate, I don't know when this is going to be topped, probably the most elaborate event chain in the game. It's not very long, but it is very good. I've already featured it here on the channel if you do want to see that, but I think it's something that you should experience it for itself because obviously it has different endings and different scenarios that you can alter and, you know, do to your heart's content. But he's, he's a cool character. He was from a mod from CK2, so not from the CK2 mod, he was from a sub mod. Became a fan favorite, was ported over here to CK3 and is now officially in the game. So definitely recommend trying a Constantine run. He has a lot of options. Plus, because he's a Viking culture, you get to raid all up in here and it's quite lucrative. So if you like playing as a Viking in base CK3, this might be a good option for you. I'm not gonna spend too much more time over here in the Northeast, just because I do wanna try to jump around a little bit, but I'm gonna focus on a two Americanists, which is basically gonna be the presidency, which can be anybody as long as, you, as you're big enough. But um, specifically, I wanna focus on Thaddeus of New York because these people basically wanna try and restore I believe it's the Kingdom of Gotham, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, the Kingdom of Gotham, which is, I mean, come on, it's dope. And I'm pretty sure Chad Theovelt is in canon or in lore. Like, he uses a baseball bat to kill people, and he also wears, like, sweet, sweet plate armor. So that's that's really dope. Um, but I, I just like the idea of, like, you basically trying to rebuild this Gotham M or Bo Gotham Kingdom and then hold it fr at, you know, from these like sort of hostile faiths that are around them because I think they're the only Americanist faith that's kind of in this region, in this area where they're trying to reestablish themselves after, you know, a lot of, a lot of time being away. Inversely, if you don't want to play as the Americanist, you could also try and play as the Holy Colombian Commonwealth. Now they are already huge. So there is that sort of, well, do I want to be that strong? But there's a lot of history between the two. Um, the presidency has fought two wars against them. One of them ended sort of in a stalemate. The other one, they ended up burning Atlanta, sort of like what happened in the Civil War. So if you want something to have like a historical enemy, you could play as either one and have a good time. I'm going to jump a little further south. And now I've done one where I played as the House of Mouse in a Florida run. I'm going to recommend Captain Jose Gaspar. So there is a big legacy of pirate things in Tampa in the Tampa Bay area and as you can see Tampa's over here so I think it'd be cool to play a sort of like a pirate culture here in Florida and to take over Florida for the for this pirate culture you have all of this Caribbean to raid and you know do as you will now you're gonna have to contend with another person on this list but it is something that's different obviously the Mickey Mouse house the imaginary and American is faith it's cool it's funny I would obviously recommend that, but if you wanted something that was a little different, maybe a little bit harder because you do have to contend with the fact that you have a liege that you're going to have to take over who's also a different faith from you. So sort of sort of something more intriguing if you like that. Moving over to the plains of what is basically, I guess the Northern US, Southern Canada, we have the Saurians who I just had a video about these. So you're probably familiar with them, but they basically worship ancient dinosaur lizard people. And they're also cannibals and they also allow themselves to be possessed by the spirit of these lizard people, and then they think they can communicate with them. It's very cool. I believe this is the only spot that they exist in game, so you could essentially try to create a kingdom for them. It is a little difficult just because you have a lot of hostile faiths surrounding you. I believe all of them are different, but if you wanted something that was maybe a little bit of a harder start, sort of playing against different hostile faiths, I, th I think this one's a good option. Plus, it's super unique. I mean, there's not many lizard... There are a couple lizard worshiping religions, but this one is probably my favorite. Next one I'm going to recommend is over here in Portlandia, and this is House Freeland. Now, Fort House Freeland actually used to control, if I'm not mistaken, it might have even been the Empire of Cascadia long ago, but their family sort of fell out of power. Sort of like another one over here that I wanted to mention, but I'm not going to because I think I said too much for the East Coast, so I'll let you find that one for yourself. But if you wanted another family that's sort of like, kind of like how House Beaton took over from another family, if you wanted to retake something, over here on the west coast i would definitely recommend the freelanders they worship a guy in faith so they're sort of like very naturalist sort of kind of kind of not, not hippie-ish because there is a hippie faith in game but like definitely more grounded earthly you know druidic in a way so it's it's cool they start off pretty small so you have a lot of room to grow a lot of room to do things versus other ones which maybe you start a little bit big keeping in line with this if you do want to start a little big 
The Mormons and After the End have literally made somebody convert. It is probably the most popular thing on the Reddit, probably the most popular thing that has ever come out of this mod. Somebody converted to Mormonism because of this mod, so maybe you should play as the Mormons. I don't know, maybe you'll find your calling. That's all I'm going to say. I don't actually know anything about them, and I've never played them, nor do I plan to, but I think that's really interesting. I'm going to go a little bit south here. So these people worship aliens. That is that is basically what they do. They created humankind by splicing DNA with an ape and their own, and that's how they made people. This is what they believe, and this is Gilgamesh, the Magnificent of Gila, or Gila, I'm not exactly sure, I think it's Gila, and I, I have nothing else to say. He's, top of the world is his house. Dude is absolutely strutting out here. I have no, I don't know anything about him, but I already know he's probably cooler than everybody else in this area, so you should definitely play as him. So in California, you have a unique golden empire and you also have unique bureaucracies so there's different governators that exist here in california and i would recommend playing as one of those because you're going to get the chance to sort of have like a sort of like a byzantine-ish experience here and after the end but i guess over here on the west coast now the main faith is this sort of guruist kind of buddhist like very peace and love free will sort of you know thing that they got going on it's a mixture of a lot of different things it's actually a pretty funny faith uh, if you if you read into it but it also is kind of scary at times i i think that playing over here in california could be very fruitful but depending on what you want to do you could also play as one of the gnarlis who are an athletic faith and they sort of worship like the waves and they worship mary jane as you can see so the game is very aware of its jokes it's quite tongue-in-cheek a lot of the time and it doesn't take itself too seriously but as i'm sure you're already getting a feel for as we're progressing through this video, the faiths are the biggest part of it. If you want to play as, I'm just gonna click a random one. If you wanna play as an interranger, which I don't even know what that is, an interranger believes that even after death, a person does not leave the trail. A person's spirit will continue to traverse the trails even after death, carrying on the memories of their past lives with them. A walk back and forth between the range and the frontier. For this reason, there's a greater focus on community and shared solidarity in the face of the difficulties they face with most other trail walkers. So they're a trail walker faith, which there's a bunch of those over here. But pretty much anywhere you click, you're probably going to see a different faith. And that's kind of the beauty of this mod. And I'm not I'm not done yet. I just wanted to throw that out there while we're while we're still, you know, young. I just wanted to, to mention that there's a lot of options here for you. So if you don't like a faith, it's sort of like the weather. You just sort of click around until you find something you like. Down here in Mexico, there's a lot you could pick. This guy's pretty where is he? This guy's really cool. So La Cucaracha. He was basically like a, I don't even know how you would describe this. He's like a super strong leader who sort of held a bunch of loose tribes together from what I understand, but he's facing death and he has a very young heir. He's only three years old. So you sort of have like some, this real bad situation to contend with that is quite rapidly approaching. And I think that that would be kind of fun to try to overcome the chaos of it. Or again, and I've mentioned this in my After the End video, you have the kingdom and you have the empire of Mexico. You have the Cristero and you have the Aleniado, and both of those have their own motivations and goals. I personally would probably choose the Empire because I believe this one is the one with the unbroken line all the way back to uh, Felina de Tal, unbroken in air quotes, but it's cool that they both believe themselves to be the true heirs of Mexico. Obviously, they're both they're also quite small relative to the size of Mexico, but you can you can expand as you will. Or you could play as these like Day of the Dead, Sombrous Faiths. There's there's a bunch of stuff down here in Mexico that you can choose. I mean, as you can see, it's it's totally broken apart. Coming down here into the Caribbean or the West Indies, as, as this character says, Queen Portia is probably the most important character down here in the Caribbean because her goal is to take it over and make an empire for herself down here. And is most likely, if I had to be honest with you, the one capable of doing that so if you want to be a strong character and create an empire that has not been seen before because there's only a set amount of them in the game there's not actually that many the strongest one being brazil if you want to be the strongest empire it's brazil so there you go i'm not even gonna i'm just gonna throw that out there right now but if you want to play as one who's like on the cusp of greatness that would be queen portia of the west indies she's brave she's ambitious and she's arrogant which is a sin to her faith but it is something that's really cool. And I also just think that, again, this is like a wide open area. You have a lot of options once you've already established yourself. You can start rolling into Florida. You can go south. You can go west. It's really up to you. I, I like the variety of this sort of playthrough. Coming down here into South America, you have the Buendia family uh, from Gabriel Garcia Marquez's 100 Years of Solitude, a fantastic novel. And also a really fun nod to sort of like this real life contemporary thing. You can play as Speaker Arcadia II and try and what I would imagine, and it would be quite difficult Try to reestablish uh, Grand Colombia, which I 
think you also get an option to combine Venezuela and Colombia as well if you if you can. This would be a really long-term playthrough, and I have messed with this a little bit, and it is not easy to play as the Buendias, but I do like that they put them in the game and that they sort of have this, you know, this legacy and this and this potential here. So coming down here into South America even further, I want to mention because I know a lot of people have they have their own opinions about the digital faiths. I really like the digital faiths, and I wish I wish I could pull this up more for you. But there's a couple of them that exist in the game. This one, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, worship. Um, so they they take medicinal drugs or like sacramental herbs, and then they become cyberneticos, where they believe that they can access the Cinco and sort of predict the future, which is really cool. They basically all these faiths are based around you know the early internet. That, that existed before the fall sometime around the year 2000 the late 90s and it's just cool they're hidden throughout the world they're not very big i think somewhere in california i think some are over here as well but if you can find them and play as them it could be an interesting playthrough i believe one of them is a cult of witches if i'm not misremembering these ones worship like i said the um the, the herbs and then i can't recall what the other one is but I, i'm pretty sure there's three but just something cool to check out if you want to down here in the falklands you have a cool wave ruler faith which is basically the remnants of like the british they are they they sort of worship the idea that there was a civilization that spanned the entirety of the sea that the sun never set on if this is i'm pretty sure this is what they worship they like they believe that they've been cut off from the heavenly isle and they kind of want to, if I'm not mistaken, they kind of want a conquest. They have terror of the seas. Yeah, they raid. And they also have a reverence for shoreline, so they get bonuses as long as you're on the shore. And I think that's really cool. These were added, if I'm not mistaken, fairly recently. They might have even been added with the release. So a cool new faith to try out down here. And I believe, yeah, all of these people over here in the, what is this? Yeah, in the Falklands are have access to that faith. So something to try out if you, you know just want to play as a, a British person. So something I haven't touched on, there's a lot of indigenous cultures and faiths that also exist in the game, and they are everywhere. So it's not specifically one that I'm going to pick for you. You could play somebody in Nunavik, you could play as somebody in Alaska. There are various indigenous cultures and faiths that are pretty unique. Not not because they're unique to After the End, but it's unique that they're being presented in a game. That's something that's not usually that doesn't usually showcase them. So if you're interested in trying something out that you're maybe not familiar with, you might not necessarily learn something, but you might gain a greater appreciation for somebody else's culture. And plus, it, it could just be cool. I mean, this is a, a beautiful image, and you have some really wonderful assets if you play as one of the indigenous cultures. I forgot to mention the Omen Tellers. They're more like the Appalachians, uh, not the Occultists. The Occultists are more like, like I said, the further further northeast. Appalachians, it's a little bit of a different culture, but if you are Appalachian and you wanted to see yourself represented, they are here in the game. The Omen Tellers are quite cool. This guy only has one trait that's really odd. Maybe play as him and see what you can do with that. But, you know, there you go. And I think that's where I'm gonna leave it. Um, again, there's so much to this mod. It would be impossible for me to tell you a million different ones. And I, as always, somebody in the comments is going to say, oh, I have this favorite character that you should try. I have this place that I love to play as. And then you should, and you should definitely listen to them. Like people have played this mod far more than me. I didn't even mention the Mahonics over here. And they're, they're a cool house, sort of like the one over here in Cascadia. But there's just, there's just too many for me to be like, oh yeah, you should play as this or you should play as that. Really what this video aims to do is to sort of get you interested in the various regions. And as you play in those regions, You'll discover new faiths, new cultures, new things that you like about the mod because it is diverse and you'll be able to find what you enjoy better than if I just tell you to play there. But I hope this video was useful. I know the mod just came out and for a lot of you this might be your first exposure to it. So I hope that it's helpful and that's going to be for me. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Sol. This has been Interesting Starts and After the End, I will happily see you in the next one.